Good morning. Your support video for Monday and Tuesday, April 26th and 27th, where we practiced some traits, bingo, and then we jumped into some notes around heredity. And I introduced the Frankenfruit project, which ended up being your foldable cover. Again, we did the bingo trait, and if you wanted to watch the video again, it is linked on the Do Now slides. We didn't have very many bingos in some classes and more in others, which led to us discussing that there was more di um, diversity in the species if you were having more bingos, which meant more traits versus um, less bingos, meaning less traits, less diversity within our classroom. Then we had you open up your notes. Your notes were filled in based on the linked slides. Now these slides, the teacher slides, are linked in the agenda slide, but we talked about how these traits are altered using selective breeding. We had an agenda. The big points of the agenda, I would have to say, is knowing the types of reproduction, heredity, and inherited traits, the difference between a gene and an allele, and how they're both on chromosomes. And then we discussed the central dogma before we talked about the cover. There was a video for allele shuffling that was shown. We reviewed sexual uh, reproduction, producing clones, and not adding or increasing genetic variation in a population, which can put them at risk. Um, if something comes in, it can wipe out the entire species. Sexual reproduction produces offspring with a unique or different set of genes, often increasing or maintaining genetic variation in a population. You can see in a Punnett's or in the pedigree down here that there's a lot of variations between the species if you have sexual reproduction because each parent gives you different traits from the chromosomes. And then we did a little practice where you should have at least three or four variations of Dalmatians that we noticed in these photos. And from here, we talked about how humans have 23 chromosomes from your dad, 23 chromosomes from your mom for a total of 46 chromosomes. And some of the inherited traits that should be included on this slide were ones that you might have marked on your bingo card. From here, we talked about the father of genetics, Gregor Mendel, and how he started to make sense of this inheriting of traits from parents to offsprings, where he originally called them plant factors. And we now know that those factors are passed down on these big molecules called chromosomes, and the genes are are segments of the DNA that code for a specific trait. Now, Gregor Mendel looked at a number of traits, but you can see seven of them listed up here on the top. And dominant traits are going to be what is seen, or the phenotype, if you have a dominant gene. Now, you don't always know the genotype because sometimes a recessive trait can be carried in the genotype. From there, we led to what it might look like to discuss the phenotype of an apple. We used the green and yellow apples, an example down here, where we can see the color of the apple, but we may not know the genotype. And the genotype is represented with two alleles for each inherited trait, and it's represented by a capital letter for dominant traits and lowercase letter for recessive traits. And then we gave some examples of how that might look. But you can tell that the genotype for dominant might be carrying that small recessive gene. And then we reviewed the example again with a different apple with a phenotype of red, how you might get a dominant trait for mom and a recessive trait for dad. And then we filled in what the chromosome looked like. You get one side from dad and this allele right here might be different than the gene inherited from the mother that codes for a trait. This side is a chromosome for mother and all these chromosomes are DNA that are tightly coiled up during the cells, um, part of the cell's life. From here, we reviewed the central dogma where in the nucleus, the DNA 
creates a message called transcription. Transcribe means to write. And then it is translated by the ribosome out on the endoplasmic reticulum in the cytoplasm of the cell to create whatever protein the cell needs. We ended the class by discussing different types of fruits that are already been um, created through selective breeding in farmers and how you're going to select two fruits and create your own frankenfruit which was on your cover. You were supposed to list the two parent fruit, describing what your new fruit looked like and what traits you were hoping for. As always, if you have questions, see me in DLS.